Get ready. It's time. Christina, Catherine, Lisa, Amy, and Lauren. Welcome to the Cimarelli Podcast. Hey, I'm Catherine. I'm Amy. I'm Lauren. And, and we're Cimarelli. Woo! Welcome back to the Cimarelli Podcast. Oh, yes. Today's episode one. 28. Today, you on YouTube will be having our whole episode. You'll be hanging out with us for our full hour. Next week, it'll be a half hour, but we love you just as much. If you want to have the full version of every episode, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Cimarelli. Guys, today we're going to talk about the different iterations of our band, the life cycle of Cimarelli. It's like the story of Cimarelli. Mean, no one knows what that means. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. It's just the story of our band. We're going to talk, talk about, about like the history, yeah. kind of how things have changed over the years and kind of how we got to where we are today with just us three here yeah. right now and kind of how that's been. Take you guys a little behind the scenes. Yeah, I feel like it's been a while since we like really told the story of our roots. It's I feel like a lot of people don't know. Yeah, yeah. it has There's been a lot. Of people don't even know we're ride. related. They're yeah, like, oh, that is wild. Sisters? Oh, wow. Yeah. But yeah, so that is what we have in store for you guys today here on our podcast. But we always start a podcast with our highs and our lows. Who would like to go first? I'll go. Okay, great. Okay, so think. my high was... I went to visit my boyfriend's family, Aww. and they live on a lake, which I'm is really fun. I'm literally so jealous. And uh, they taught me how to sail a sailboat. Ooh. Wow. Was that and scary? No, but they had like a small one where it's like, it literally tipped over while we were doing it, and we <laughs> capsized in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> well, <laughs> not the ocean. The, the boat yes. fell? Lord yeah. Did you fall in the ocean? <laughs> yes. Well, well, in the, the giant the lake. lake. Cat. Oh, the lake. The lake, not the ocean. Oh, wait, there's no sea monsters in there. Yeah. Well, you never know. As far this as is, we know. There's no Loch Ness um, uh, So that, that was kind of scary, but it was still fun. I was actually kind of good for a first time. Wow. So. First time you know, you're like, Lord, where's the wind? Okay, you, you look until you can hear it in both ears. And then, oh, you're supposed to have the boat tilted this way with the wind blah, blah. so I was like steering wow. like mm, gotta Why move do I this feel way like mm, gotta move that really way really in your vibe it is in my vibe so that was actually really fun even though it's kind of like okay we'll see about this that was fun my low was that uh I had to talk to a bunch of people over the weekend. No hate. No hate to any of them. No hate. Great people. Love love them. But it was just a lot for me as an introvert, you know, Mm -hmm. to like be around people that I don't really know that well. And that everyone else knows though. Yeah. And people that I was just meeting and kind of like trying to be nice, you know, because like Mm, if I just like don't try to be nice, I'm not that nice, you know. So Yes, you are. Well, Okay. But it's like, if I just did what I felt like doing that, I do, like, with people that I'm comfortable with, I would be sitting there, like... I think you're pretty... I don't think for you're, For half like, of it, not laughing at everything, you're not just making... Comments. You're very neutral when you're not, yeah. like, putting in the effort. I get that. But I feel like that would come off as rude it if you just met me and me just sitting there, like... Yeah, maybe just because I know you. I'm not a very unbiased yeah, person. exactly. It's like, once you know <laughs> like, me, you rude. know, oh, wait, but I, know I you. don't hate you. But yes. you might think that at first. So I was trying to not make people think I hate them. You know, and it was just a little draining for Mm -hmm. me. So I was just very tired uh, after that. You just wanted to go lay in a dark room for a while. Yeah, which I did then when I got home. Good good. for you. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go visit his parents, though. Like, I'm really (laughs) ready. He's like, hey, can I have the invite? Like, let's go. You should. I gotta go. Amy brings her sailing outfit. Yes. Her sailing hat. I should. (laughs) Uh, Okay, I guess I'll, I'll, I just thought of something. Okay, so my high was that um, Mel and I, my friend, we went to see Sheryl Crow at Live on the Green, which is like, uh, I thought you said Show Crow. Sheryl Sheryl Crow. Show Crow. Sheryl. (laughs) I'm thinking, oh my God. Sheryl. (laughs) <laughs> okay, if any person watching this, they probably don't know. I hope someone what knows. What is it called? Okay, know. if you just search a tale of two criminals. Yeah. It's on a, YouTube. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's Unless a, she hey, hey, hey. it. It's a short film. No, I think film. it's still there. 
a short film. A short film. Directed by me. Directed by and Lauren. Danny. And Danny. That we filmed oh, as I don't know, amazing. 10 year olds. <laughs> and the little boys are in it. And they're like yeah. six. My little brothers and Danny are starring in it. I was filming it. And it's, so it's funny. amazing. I had to say my music choices for each scene were, they were really, really there. Something. They were going um, for it. Wait, if you search it's that, a great it's film. actually but, really creepy what comes up. Oh, Let me put something in I don't know if it actually is. I still might on not still be there. <gasps> So I maybe don't think not. It is. Mm. Well, rip Never to mind. that video. I need to ask Danny to put it back up. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> I think it was on her channel, but it might have been on our joint channel. I don't, I don't see remember it anywhere. Danny. Anyway, we did that, and Danny's name in it was Cheryl, and so <laughs> Joey's <laughs> like our Joey? youngest brother, Joey. He's like four or five, and he's like. Where's Cheryl? <laughs> so Cheryl. It sounds like so that. Good. Just referencing yeah. that. Anyway, if you know, you know. You I hope Cheryl. somebody out there knows. I really do. So um, they do. Someone but she does. was an icon. Cheryl Crow is incredible. <laughs> I was nervous, guys. I was scared because Mel and I looked up her set list when she first started, like her last set list, and she only played like two songs that I knew. Oh, and no. I, was I hate it when they do so that. So scared. Give the people what they want. Exactly. Come on. But then she pulled out all the show stoppers. And oh. so Mel and I were having a ball. It Mm. was so fun. And it was a great night. I had a great time. That's awesome. I'm good. And let's see. I can think of many, many lows. But Mm, just pick one. My current low (laughs) is that I had to do the harmonies on our Christmas cover. And it was so hard. I thought those would be easy. All you do is go like, ah. But it's so, okay, listen to me. I was having to sing like extremely low and it's hard to control. Uh, And you have to get them very much like on all the like jumps and everything really steady or else the pitch correction makes it sound like really crazy. And so I'm like, La, 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 la. And I'm like trying so hard <laughs> to make it like good. Amy standing in is our resident <laughs> bass. So scary. Even though standing she is in. Not, well, she standing in. Is, she is, is our resident she is bass. Our bass. I have always been. God, I don't know where I'm standing. Even though in, you're but. not a man, usually bass are men. Bass is well, well. I get those bass be anything. Covered, I know. But, but they but are difficult They're not usually bases. <laughs> Women are like, what's the lowest for a woman? It's like tenor. Can women be tenors? No. I think so. I think. I think I don't that know. is, though, if you have a choir of men and women. I think but if women it's are just, just women, then you have a bass. They're a doing bass line. the bass, They're doing the bass line. line. It just will never be as low as, like, you know, the guy yeah, from yeah, Pentatonix. Yeah. Hey, Kath, well, I <laughs> yeah. am never going to be here. But you know what, Amy? You do a great job. And you hold it You hold it down. Yeah, it was hard, though, because Lauren also had his pitch <laughs> down an octave. She, and no, it sounds like you're giving her back hand <laughs> call. She is. No. <laughs> like... You'll never be him. No, yeah, I will. no. What I'm trying to you say is, I, I, you can't get mad at yourself for not being a man who literally sings that low, Look, and it is hard to sing that. Cad, low. That's my what I'm pronouns to say. are he because I'll never be him. Okay, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Life happens as it does. I'm not a man who has a beautiful bass voice, but I did what I could with what I had. Yeah, but it was very, very difficult. <laughs> I was so did you finish so it? Bad. I did. Good. <sighs> and you might have to do a little, a little, um, a little. Post production, yes, a little work, a little, a little magic. movie magic, yeah. Because some of those notes, I I really read yeah, down. I, to I can the, probably help down you to out the there. depths of the sea, but yeah. Okay, Kathy, have a <laughs> okay. My high and low are rolled into one. Love it. It's one situation. Um, it's my twins' birthday, their first birthday, mm. and I'm planning their party, and it's a high and a low. Mm. I love hospitality. I love gathering. Oh, people. you say you love hospitals. I was like, no, I don't love hospitals. <laughs> Actually, kind of traumatized by hospitals after my birth. Yeah. Um, but I love hospitality, and I really love gathering people. But I don't love details, mm. and that kind of stresses me out. I'm not great with like a million details. I'm like, nah, I'm gonna forget something. So I'm doing my best. It's it's half fun, half stressful. So that's like my high and my low. I feel that. I feel that. Well, what about Max? He's good with details. Or is he not? He works a lot. Uh, (laughs) I'm like, oh, we need to print this thing. We need to make these decorations. We need to plan out this food. Mm. And that's just not really his thing. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. He's not like a creative visionary. Yeah. But I mean, he could. mm, Well, I don't know. He's not a craft legend. (laughs) I just don't know that he would be like, oh, let me go do the balloons or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's like, he'll probably be helping with the twins, taking care of the twins. Yeah. Okay. I feel. So anyway. Just need to figure it all out. You didn't hire the party planning committee. 
Ja. 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 So, it's a high and a low. Oh, I can't okay. believe almost one. That is so wild. I know, they're so old. Oh, hate it and love it. Love it mainly. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. Woo. Guys, I don't know if you've ever heard of my segment, Amy's Current Crisis, but I am the kind of person <laughs> that gets stuck focusing on problems, shall we mm. say, rather than solutions. We've or solutions and problems at the same time, mm. you know. And I would not be where I am today um, without the help of my amazing therapist, Meredith. You are a great woman, Meredith. We love you. <laughs> and... The thing about that is that therapy has really, really helped me to learn so many amazing coping skills and to really become a better, more like grown up version of myself. But sometimes it's really hard to find a good therapist. Yeah. I had Catherine find one for me because I was like, I'm too scared to look. I don't know where to look. I don't know what to do with better help. They can help you find a therapist. They match you with a therapist, and it's online therapy, which my therapy is online, and I stand. I love having online therapy. Yeah, it's really easy. Like, if you just go to the website, they have, like, a little questionnaire. It's, like, very detailed, a really good, good questions, but it's not, like, it's not overwhelming where you're, like, doing this for hours. Um, they just ask you, like, I don't know, a lot of good questions of, like, what are you looking for? Like, what are the issues you're having? What, like, kind of therapist are you looking for? And if you don't like the one you match with first, they can help you find someone else really quickly, which is yes. nice. Sometimes it takes a few tries to find the right therapist. Yes. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Cimarelli, C-I-M-O-R-E-L-L-I, today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash Cimarelli. So now we have our five perspectives, a.k.a. three perspectives, because there's only three of us. If you want to give your perspective in the comments, you can be the fourth perspective. So Love our it. question today, guys, and I'd love to hear your opinions on this. Should the passenger... The front passenger, to be specific. Be in control of the radio or should the driver? Oh, driver. interesting. Sorry. I think <clears throat> if I'm the passenger, then the passenger. But if, <laughs> if I'm you're the, the driver, driver, then the, the driver. driver. Hmm. <laughs> Personally, I think whoever owns the car, like, so which like is usually the dad. driver. <laughs> no, no, no. No. <laughs> no, sorry. Okay, if you're okay, not owns. Whoever, like, is, like, the general user of the car. So, like... The driver. Oh, it's just okay. your car, and you're driving, you're picking up your friend. You control the music, but it's always fine to offer to be like, hey, I have this cool playlist. Do you want me to put it on if they're not really playing anything? I personally don't like when people just come in my car and immediately put their playlist on. Yeah, that's I want them to. There needs to be some communication here. Yeah. Like, don't infringe on my playlist. Just like, if you want to play something, I'm cool to hear your playlist, but you know, it's kind of a good don't. vibe. I don't want to hear their playlist. <laughs> Unless they're like begging me and like, okay. Yeah, I just don't like what people do it without asking. That's the only thing. When, when I'm driving, I'm like, this is my, you know, it's their car or their turf. I don't know. I really don't care. I also really don't drive many people around in my life. Like, I really yeah. don't. Yeah. But I feel like, honestly, whoever cares more. I like to say that true. when Amy's driving, it's always a good time. Amy that puts is. on these, like, throwbacks. And I'm you're great. like, ooh, this is a good one. I have Lauren, great you, music you got good, you got good music, too. Lawrence is more, like, hip. Yeah, Lauren I got like, like hit music. music. Never is from heard. this century. Mm -hmm. I enjoy Mine riding in both of your cars for different reasons. They're just yeah. different vibes. Yeah. yeah, if you ride in my car, you'll probably get some new songs to add to your playlist. Yeah, if you ride definitely. in my car, you will hear you get some old songs old to re-add to your you playlist. Like. It's like, it's like, like ooh, a single I love on. this one. Yeah. Oh, You're the like, only yeah. time Lauren's is New Music Friday. The only time I like need to have. The radio is, aka my music, is if we're going on a specific drive, like a mm. fall drive or yeah. like a night oh. drive. Like I, I'm very good at DJing those. So you like, are. You're I good at this. like, um, like catching the feeling. Because that is all I do when I listen to music. I realize this. I listen to music based off of a what the sky looks like, b what the weather wow. is, and see how I feel. Yeah. yeah, I'm like it's just a vibe, and I get really annoyed like. When the the playlist does not match the vibe, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, it does this weird it. me out because it's like you can create such an ambiance with just a playlist. Oh yeah, and it's amazing how it can really change people's moods in different ways. Yeah, yep. I just made a playlist for a daddy daughter dance. I'm pretty proud of it, honestly. 
Oh, cute. Why? Yeah, it was for like a girls group I help out with. Oh, and they that's needed, cute. And they were like, they asked if anyone could play us. And I was like, beautiful baby. Yes, I did. Out. Yeah, my friend Talk and I collaborated, and she's actually, <laughs> I've never been to a daddy daughter dance, and she has. Me. And she was like, oh, these are, are songs going? I normally play. Um, I might try to go for a bit and help with the beginning. Cute. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I was I like, oh, that. I love making playlists for family friendly events. It's like my Aww. my forte. Honestly, I could see that for you. <laughs> love it. I could see you being a DJ. I would love to You'd be DJ. one that Maybe when I'm older, I'll about. become a DJ. I have an irrational fear of DJ. <laughs> Me I'm too. Sorry. But You're it's so not scary. irrational. <laughs> Every time, like, you mean, like, local DJs, yes! right? Not, like... I have, I guess, a rational fear because of local DJs. Because they're always weird, like, they're no scary. offense, but, like, you go to, like, a wedding or something, and they're always, like, talking too much, and you're like, this is not about you. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a certain scary. personality type. It's like, they like <laughs> they like to be the center on center stage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, they do. Ay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, guys, this is bringing us to our, as it is labeled, main topic of this podcast. Hmm. Would you, either of you, like to lead us through this? Yeah. yeah um, you can do it. I'll just give a, an intro and then you can yeah, tell. Okay. Which we kind of said this in the beginning. But we're just going to kind of talk about the history of our band and kind of how it's changed throughout the years. Maybe some things you guys didn't know. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of how it's been with us three lately. You know, as I said earlier... Give you a little behind the scenes, look behind the curtains. So, Kat, you could start us off. Yeah. Just from the beginning. Yeah. So, I feel like I've seen a lot of comments over the last, like, year or two that have been like, oh, I, f- like, I just thought when there was like, I found you guys when Barrett was born. Like, I feel oh, like we have a lot baby. of newer people and maybe they've, yeah. maybe they've dug really far back and they have heard our story, but there's probably a lot you don't know. So, yeah. let's, we're going to try to add some new details and kind of fill it in. So I'm just going to start from like a point of view of like, you're someone that doesn't know anything about us and you kind of want to know like, how did this all begin? Yeah. Because it's kind of a, it's a, definitely a unique situation. So the three of us, we're all sisters, obviously. Well, maybe you didn't know that. We're all sisters and we have three other sisters, Christina, Lisa, and Danny, and we have five brothers. So we grew up in a really big family. Um, 11 siblings were all like full blood, whatever, biological siblings. People always ask that like, oh, is it like step siblings or anything? But we're all like biological siblings. Um, we grew up in Northern California, um, right outside of Sacramento. Yes. Sacramento pride, NorCal, NorCal, NorCal pride. pride. We, we love Maybe NorCal. Maybe not Sacramento, but NorCal pride for yeah, sure. Definitely. We didn't really grow up in the city. We grew up like in the, in the burbs, in I the would suburbs. say. Yes. So <laughs> we grew up in the burbs yeah. and, uh, we lived in this house, like on top of a hill and people would be like, oh, you guys are that big family that lives on top of a hill. And we were like, yes. yeah, that's us. And we would play music so loud that people at the like school could hear it sometimes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was like way down. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Remember? We were very loud. So we were kind of like, um, I would say barbarians. Like a that was bit. kind of our, our childhood. I don't know like, exactly what you mean by that. But we would like run around in the <laughs> we backyard. We were young and wild like, and free. There would be like a random fork in the mud and like a Many random, random plate. Forks and like a broken glass. Oh, that's a lot of broken glass. We're painting a very, um, you know, rough <laughs> image here, but really we were just kind of like, you know, we just adventured. And Hanging out. Yeah, we were outside all the time. Yeah, we were we, all homeschooled, so we were all yeah. home a lot. We homeschooled. We were homeschooled. Um, and I think that's honestly a big part of why we are the way we are. I feel like I'd agree. we, because we ha- were homeschooled, we had a lot of time for like music and like instruments and all that type of stuff. And I think too, homeschoolers, a lot of times I found this from talking to other homeschoolers, like you kind of just have like a very like outside of the box. Like you're just kind of like entrepreneurial. I don't know. Yeah. A lot of homeschoolers, I feel like we've talked about that. So that's kind of how we grew up. And then I think the band started originally. Christina wanted to do a band. Yeah. And she, what Christina told me is that she wanted to do a band with her friends, but she could never get everyone to like get together and practice. And then my mom was like, why don't you do it with your sisters? Because <laughs> you guys live together. It'd be easy to practice. And so I think she like asked us and I was like, no. Yeah, you and Lisa were like, no, man. Lisa and I were like, that doesn't, no. You're too cool. Well, too cool. I just didn't want to do a band because I was like, I'm doing musical theater. I'm focusing on that. <laughs> I, I think I was like 14 when she initially asked me, like about to turn 15. So you guys did the band first. We were like 12. <laughs> I was we, 12 were like no. nine. Yeah, I was like eight. Yeah, oh. and but I was like 11. <laughs> the first order of business was, was we went across the 
the street to this park and did a photo shoot with Danny, who was what six. <laughs> Danny took our <laughs> on, first like, picture. On like a little like digital yes, camera. I will. This I will the have. Year, what was the year? Two thousand. It's like two thousand six. Yeah, I've seen it was like sixteen. I will have yeah. the photo inserted. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The so photo it'll be in here. Is wild. So yeah. So they were like, let's just start a band. Let's take a picture. Got to have a band pick. Yeah. So then, <laughs> it's so cute. We put our names on it. I. It's very fuzzy to me because I was 15 at this time and I'm 30 now. So that was 15 years ago. It was a while. I know. 30, 40 and thriving. I know. It's crazy. I didn't know that. Um, So, okay. So then, so they started initially and I don't know. How did Christina bamboozle me and Lisa into getting into the I feel like it was really mom. I feel like she booked us a performance. Oh, yeah. Oh, at a church or something. I forgot to say like beyond the fact that we were like raised in this like homeschooled family. So we had time for like different hobbies and stuff. But our mom is a musician. I forgot to say that. And our she mom, was in a band growing up, too. Our mom was in a band, like a Christian rock band growing up. And yeah. our mom has a master's degree in music with a concentration in piano performance. So she's like very much piano player. She loves singing. She knows like harmonies, music theory. So she taught us all that stuff when we were really little. And she like started a ch- uh, children's church choir at our church. And we would so we'd sing at we'd sing at like Easter, Christmas. Um, she put us in musical theater when we were really young. Um, our grandma was like our agent, you know. She our got grandma us, had us sing. Our grandma, all over oh yeah, the our place. grandma booked us at every old folks senior living home church that she could things. find. Church it events. Was wild. Our grandma was like, check out my. I think I sang like Hello Dolly sitting on a piano once when I was oh like, oh my nine. gosh, yeah. And so like, it's a wild life. It was kind of initially me, Christina, and Lisa who were like the bar- well, it was called Beauty Shop because it was girls, but it was basically barbershop beauty shop court not quartet trio. trio we were in a quartet i feel like it's usually a barbershop quartet but we didn't have we, it was just the three of us so we would do the harmonies and that was kind of like how we started in music was just a lot of like performances from when we were very young so that kind of yeah. that kind of explains more why christine yeah. even had that idea yeah just a lot of music stuff so then she somehow bamboozled us or my mom into like, oh, all five of us. Danny was, so Danny's our youngest. Danny was six. She was, she was really young. young. So she wasn't, I mean, we were all young, yeah. but she was very I young. I was nine, so. But you know, no, Lauren, Lauren was a seasoned nine. nine-year-old, so Lauren was old enough. <laughs> so we, our, I think our mom like got a call because, oh, this would happen. So this is all such a crazy story. So like, it's just really a lot of details. So Christina, Lisa, and I, we sang harmonies. We sang the national anthem at, I think, like a boxing event. And oh, there was a video yeah. of that posted to YouTube. And someone saw it and they were like, hey, would your daughters want to uh, perform at this like Christian teen conference thing? Do you remember that? Yes. And then my that mom was, was like, sure, they can perform. Now, keep in mind that my mom had us. I don't know why it was like they looked they were on like a band, like a full band with like instruments. We played piano. We all played piano. We weren't well, going to have played guitar. You played yeah. guitar at that time? Yeah. Okay, so I guess Amy was in guitar. And oh, and our older brother Michael played guitar too. That's mm-hmm. an important part of the story. So they booked us this gig and we mostly played piano. Amy, how long had you played guitar at that point? This was 2007. Not like super long. You were like kind of just getting into years-ish, it. Two years-ish, but not really that mo- well. Okay. I don't know why. I thought you started playing it for the performance, but you played it way before no, that. No, I played it before that, yeah. Okay, yeah. For, I me- remembered that wrong. I had taken guitar lessons. I didn't really... I t- took them for a year. I didn't really like it. So we were like, okay, let's put together a band for this performance. Um, Michael, our older brother, he was actually, he's a really good guitarist. So he was Incredible. like the lead. Were you rhythm guitar? Is that what it's called? Yes. So Michael was our lead guitarist. Amy had already played, started playing guitar. She was a rhythm guitarist. Lauren played keyboard. Mm-hmm. Christina played keyboard as well. Yeah. Two keyboards. Lisa played the drums. And I, I had already played guitar for like a year, but I just didn't like it. But I was like, ooh, bass. That sounds fun. Let's do that. So I started taking bass lessons. And then um, Lisa. She um, played the drums. We, had, we like all did drum drum lessons. We did yeah. drum lessons. It was for like six months. It wasn't for like a long time. But Lisa mm-hmm. was like very gifted, I feel like, as yeah. like just in general. I mean, we all, everyone's gifted, but like, okay. I feel like for some reason, Lisa. They was, all sing, yes. I think Lisa was really good with rhythm or something. I'm not sure Lisa why. Lisa just yeah, was actually good drums. at Basically, Thing. We all learned to become a band for this one performance. For this one event. Yeah, and it then, was fun. And we had to yeah. learn like a, I want to say like it was half like an a, hour or 45, 45, 45 minutes. Five minutes. Set. It was a lot of music. And I think we had three months. So then I yeah. think after that, we were kind of off. And we were like, that like, was yeah. really fun. Yeah. yeah, and we just started performing all around, all around basically, like at like the Grape Festival or whatever. <laughs> yeah. and, and we formed at the State Fair. The State Fair. Yeah. And, like, we get some things crowds. like that. It was, fun. Um, it was fun. And 
Yeah. Oh, we did a performance at the state fair that started with only our aunt in the audience. Yeah. Yes. The state so fair was fun because it was like we'd start at these random booths and it was like no one was coming. There would just be like one person and then people would start to hear yeah, the music. Yeah, these random stages. And then we would try to get fun. more and more people to come and then it would be like a whole crowd and they'd be like getting into it. And we were like, yeah, oh my gosh, fun. we had a crowd. It was really fun. So we, it was a lot of fun. Um, And we had a lot, just a lot of different like changes in the band. So we started out with um, the instruments and we did a lot of like 80s rock covers. We yeah. did. Why? Why? We don't Why? know. We did Toto. We did Foreigner. No, because we were performing <laughs> at, the at like the park. family events. So we're like, oh, we should play stuff that, like the older people are going to know. Yes. Yeah. That's I don't know why, why we, we did played that. for the adults, but not the children. Also, I think because it was a bunch of like families. It yeah, was like yeah, young kids. We like family and, like, and stuff that people would yeah. know. I'm trying to think what was even popular in the 2000s. I would have been yeah, like NSYNC, Britney Spears. I don't know. We, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this was like the mid. Yeah, yeah, it was like 2007. So yeah, that's how we got started. And then how did we end up having like going from Michael to not having Michael? How did that happen? Um, well, because Michael didn't sing with us. He just played guitar. Oh, so I remember like we were like, oh, we want to do Miley Cyrus. Michael's like, I don't want to do that. Miley oh, Cyrus. Yeah. We started Bro, we having, have covers like, to you again. That's really good. Our brother likes like metal rock yeah. like he was listening to like metallica avenge sevenfold and like he kind of wanted to go more in that direction i feel like we were yeah, kind of starting we're to like, be more no. like let's play miley Cyrus. <laughs> like we want to do like pop like party in the usa and i think we kind of started to have a little bit of um like division in that way yeah we creative to- differences yeah well and like we sang and he didn't want to like sing with yeah, us he didn't sing with us so, so then yeah when he- we started like acapella stuff it was like just us yeah, yeah and i don't even know how did we transition into acapella, he also had but- like a job at the like selling yeah. cars and stuff. He like he was very like, booked. He was kind of in his own, human. yeah, his own direction. But we were kind of all together because we were all like, were you guys middle school yet? Or no, I was elementary, <laughs> elementary, <laughs> middle, and high school. We're age. all like school age, yeah. yeah. So yeah, so eventually we somehow end up becoming an acapella group. That was our well, next iteration. We didn't have for some. We wanted to do part in USA, and we thought the fastest way to do it would just sing it, be singing it acapella on YouTube. Like, yes. So that was, and we've told the story before, so I'll just tell it briefly. That was how we ended up it. becoming or going viral. We we had a YouTube channel. We'd put up like some original music. Yeah, if you yeah, go back like, to the very beginning of our oh channel, my there's gosh. all these fun, filmed, yeah. like some of our live performances. Of yeah. Us yeah. playing Hold the up, Line by but, Toto is on our channel yes, at the very like beginning. Yes, you'd like to see that. Um, our band But then days. I think what happened was we were obsessed with this teen blog site where they did like all these like celebrity I know it makes you sound so old but that's what it was at the time you look at the blog and you scroll and it was like the Jonas Brothers Demi Lovato Miley Cyrus it was like all those Disney stars and it was all these like updates about their life or their new song yeah and Lisa like so we were like oh I remember I was actually the one that saw this it was like Miley Cyrus had a leaked there was a leaked version of Party in the USA and we heard it early before it didn't even come out. Oh yeah. And then we found out on that website that it was going to be, she was going to perform at the Teen Choice Awards. And I was the one that said, I was like 17, what the heck Love was I marketing. thinking? Like, I was like, we should film a video of us doing that song and put it on our YouTube channel like on Monday or right around then because if everyone's searching for the song from the Teen Choice Awards, maybe they'll find our video when they're looking for it. They did. And so we literally, <laughs> I mean, I think you can see in the bloopers, did we have bloopers in that one or no? I don't remember. We had like random cuts yeah. and stuff. We didn't sing the song. I mean, all the way Christina through. was like running off to the side and like looking at the lyrics on a piece of paper. We like barely knew the song and we threw the cover together. I mean, I think it turned out good, but it, it was did. like, it was, good. it was very like last minute. And we were like, let's do it. We want to get it up for the Teen Choice Awards. I think we wrote in the title like Miley Cyrus, Teen Choice Awards. Like we wanted people yeah. to find our video. Yeah. And Lisa, which was, that was also a big part of this. Lisa sent it to that blog, like, because they, they would put up the songs from these young celebrities. And then they were like, she's like, here's our cover. So they actually posted it on their website. Oh, shocking. Which it got, that also got it a lot of traction. So I don't know if it was yeah. a mixture of people searching it or if it was from the blog, but all yeah, of it. Yeah, kind of. So that was in August of 2009 that we, that, that our video, pardon you say, went viral. And then... From there, it wasn't even that long after. I want to say it was in a within a month. Within a month, yeah. That Lisa got a message from Rose. Yes. So Lisa got a message from a 13-year-old girl on oh, our Oh my gosh. On the other side of the world. She was in London and her and she said, 
um, my my mom is a manager for these like artists in the UK, and um, she they're looking for like a family band they want to manage or something like that. No, her artist Jesse J wrote "Pardon You Say," so she yeah. can get covers of the song. Right, and then she found us. But they were, but I like, know Ooh. that they were also like they wanted something with like a family or like they oh, were like okay. or they, there was something about like that. us being a family that they were drawn to. I don't know. I just remember that detail, and they really liked our cover. So she said, um, our mom, you know, they were in London. She's like, we have a representative in L.A. We want to fly her up to Sacramento to um, meet you guys and you can sing for her. And I remember her. I think her name was Chloe. Chloe, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she like and it was so crazy because our mom. (laughs) This is so funny. Our mom had her friend um, who was like a musical theater person who used to live in L.A. come over and like coach us. Like, what should we wear? How should we sing? Like, and I remember her. I remember clearly her friend being like, just wear like plain like outfits so that they can kind of put you in whatever outfit they want. Like you want to be a blank she canvas. She was very much an actor. Yeah. So that they can. Yeah. She, almost like an acting perspective. You want the these record labels or whatever to like see you as a blank canvas and that you can become whatever they want you to be. Which I remember being 17 being like, okay, cool. Sounds good. So we all just wore like, I broke out the like, yoga pants <laughs> and the pattern shirt. We wore like sparkly tank tops. Yeah, we did. And like mm-hmm. these like kind of like gaucho type pants or whatever. Yes. Like that was just 2007. And this uh, representative came to our house from the management company and we like sang for her. And we sang for her. I guess she really we played liked as a it. band for her. It was fun. Yeah, it was really fun. And then from there, she started. Um, so this lady Sarah, she became our manager, and she started having us. I think we, she, she eventually came. We met her. She started having us fly down to L.A. like all the time yeah. to, or actually drive. Oh my gosh, I remember that. I was in college. Christina, Lisa, and I were in college. Like at just like local community college. And I was like trying to do my homework with my phone as a light at the nighttime driving back from L.A. And I got the worst grades that semester because I missed a bunch of class. <laughs> but they were like we're following our dream. We got to yeah. do this. We did. So we yeah, we kept driving to L.A. and we started auditioning for all these record, all the record labels. labels. We yeah. sang for a bunch of them. And like a lot of them were just like, yeah, they're real, they're talented. We like them, but we don't really know what to do with this type of group. Like, yeah, it was like a lot of people were just like. They didn't really get it. Like, they're like, yeah, you guys are talented, but I don't really know what what we would do with you. And then, but then we sang for Island. Yeah, in the and, UK. Yeah, Island Records, they're under Universal, and um, it, but it was in L.A. They're like L.A. Yeah. branch, and they really liked it. And Who they, was that? Um, <sighs> Darkus? Oh, Darkus? Yeah. I loved okay. it. Yeah, the, I don't know if he's still the head, but the head of it was his name was Darkus. And okay. they really yeah, liked yeah. us cool. and they ended up signing us. I don't remember who else was signed. Was Ed Sheeran with them or no? Someone was him I at think, the time. No, 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 he wasn't. It was like, I don't know. Someone someone was with them. I can't remember. <laughs> a lot of people someone are with them. I think, Bob, I think it was like Bob Marley's label. That was like one of the big ones or something. So, which, you know, we're super similar to Bob Marley. So that Very makes sense. similar. But um, no, so they just did a lot of like pop groups. So yeah, we sang for them and we got signed to um, Island Records, which was like a huge dream come yeah. true. Yeah. We literally would sit in our living room being like, we have a record la- deal and we're moving to LA. We have a record deal and we moved to LA like every single day. And then yeah. within a year of doing that, maybe we had a record deal and we oh, were moving to it LA. It was so quick. We literally put up the Pardon the USA cover. I mean, like you knew we'd been doing that music for years August, before or, that. But Pardon yeah. the USA came out in August 2009. And oh, by yeah. April of we 2010, it was LA less than a we year. Because I remember it was right after Easter. Like we moved to oh, Malibu. Eight months. Yeah, yeah. it was really... Yeah. So Very we like, quick. yeah, we like got signed and we, we wanted to be with Disney. That was our biggest goal. Yeah. We wanted to be, we loved like the, the Jonas, Jonas Brothers, Brothers and like, you know, Miley Cyrus and Selena Gomez. We wanted to be like Disney stars. That was, I think our honest goal. Probably. And we printed out a picture of the CEO where <laughs> we were like, oh yeah, like, we were like we looking at it. We're like, we're going to meet him. We're going to like, oh. we're going to make this happen. But that clearly didn't work out. Well, we did. Meet we did help. audition for <laughs> Disney and they were like. I don't think they really liked us or something. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know what happened there. I, I was, have no clue. I just remember it was a weird vibe. She That's was, all. The lady was really nice though, the one lady. I just remember um, it was I feel like, like they were just sitting there like I remember it was like this boardroom and it was very cold and they, and they, just they were like, like they hated us. Yeah, they <laughs> were kind like, of scary. We hate children or like teenagers and I'm like is not what Disney is. <laughs> I don't know. But, I don't know. That was just my vibe at the time. It was a lot. So, yeah, so we were like 
achieving our dream of moving to LA and yeah. like meeting these like huge like record label people. And then suddenly we were signed with this big record label and we were going to like songwriting sessions and like we went to like movie premieres. Like it really felt like this very like c- Cinderella story thing mm-hmm. at first. Like, yeah, because very- we had no connections or anything to the music industry at all whatsoever. We had no clue what to expect. We had no clue how it worked. We were yeah. so like naive to what the entertainment industry actually was yeah we just kind of saw it from the outside and we're very like starry-eyed about it i think yeah because we were really young too i mean christina was what 18 like she was the oldest out of all of us yeah Yeah, we were so young we were not so we were like i mean that's what you'd expect from kids and teenagers so yeah we moved to um our we were looking around different places in la and our mom loves water and she's always dreamed of living by like the ocean so we moved to malibu because our mom really wanted to be by the ocean and we were in this house that was like way up in the canyons on top of a hill at this like treacherous oh, drive so gorgeous. it was beautiful but the drive up there was that. like you literally felt like you were like leaning backwards oh, and going like vertical up a hill like everyone went to our house was like that drive was terrifying so it is scary it. So, yeah, that was our um, house in Malibu. We lived there for five years. Fun fact, it actually burned to the ground in a wildfire. Yeah, it was um, wild. Three years, two or three years after we moved, which is Yeah, not while we lived in it. After we lived. Yeah, it's crazy, though. Like, I don't know, if we would have stayed longer. We lived in L.A. for five years. Like, oh, and Danny joined the band at this point because she she turned 10. She was old enough, (laughs) I guess. And she joined us and we had a great time. We were... Like in trying to make it in the music industry and like doing YouTube, doing YouTube, going around, like doing writing, all these different things, like trying to trying like, to put out an album, which we never <laughs> put out under our label. No yeah. hate, but like we never did. Um, yeah, I want to say that when Danny joined the band, that was really special. Like I was. feel like Danny added this very um, like funny, quirky, like cr- like high energy. And yeah. I thought that was really a, like, I mean, everyone added something really special, oh, but it just gosh. felt like when Danny joined <laughs> it, it was sing. like complete. Like, <laughs> it was good. I don't want to sound like, oh, everyone sucks, but then, you know. Mm, you didn't you, say that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I felt like it was really special when we it, it was, was six really special. Yeah. It was totally just the circle, the circle completed. Yeah. 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 And we lived in Malibu for five years. And I, it was interesting, I think, being signed with a label. I think we kind of had this idea, like, yeah. oh, and I, and I don't, I don't, under, don't, know if you would have any other idea having first come to LA you're in the pop world you're immersed in this new world where you think you get signed with a label and they're just going to do everything for you they're going to make everything happen so well that's what they say yeah they 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 tell you there's a lot of meetings where it's like we're gonna do this we're gonna do this yeah i can put you on tour with this person you're gonna do this single with this writer yeah i mean they definitely did a lot of things for us they did one of the things i'm the most grateful for is that we got connected with a lot of really big songwriters oh yeah and we did a ton that of songwriting fun. sessions for sessions? years i mean yeah. and that was i think that was a huge learning experience it for really us. was like, oh, yeah we learned how to write like how do these people write songs what's their process how do you record how a song? do we arrange stuff? and these were some like amazing like really really good songwriters yeah so, like we wrote with liz rose oh, oh my gosh who that wrote, was like the best only. she well she wrote a lot of Taylor with Swift's Taylor Swift, first stuff. oh first my gosh, stuff, like her first two albums, maybe. Yeah. So like learning from her. Oh my gosh, like write a story. I wrote shoot. Oh, she was so cool. I loved her. We had a lot of a lot of like high highs and low lows. I would say yeah. with writing. Yeah, some of the sessions were really oh my hard, gosh. and they yeah. were so weird. So they made us write a song about mermaids. <gasps> I remember that. I was like, like, why are we doing this? They tried to make us write all these. um, It was catchy though. Oh, 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 yeah. Anyway, wow. They made us do all this weird, like, like club music as well. That That was was a really weird. It was like we're going out. We were like, but that was like like, of the time. Like that was when like Dynamite, My Tayo Cruz, like all those songs were about like going out and like being at the club. Even though we weren't really, I personally was not at the club. Not at all. Twelve. <laughs> None of us were un- over the age of twenty-one. <laughs> well, Christina probably would have been. By yeah, 2011. not in the first two years. Two thousand eleven. She'd be twenty. Yeah, like towards. But that was when we'd already been there for a year and a half, well, and we've been to plenty yeah. of. Yeah, we only had one of us that was over twenty-one. Yeah, so yeah. it was just interesting. It was a journey. I mean, there was a lot of yeah. There was a lot of sessions where they're like, yeah. all right, put your hands in the air, like 
Hmm. What should the song like, be? It's like DJ this. Which yeah. is interesting because I feel like just about Liz Rose for a second, like she was like, what's going on in your lives? Oh, I love that. That was like her first question. What do you guys want to write about? Because I, she, I remember saying like, I think the best songs are about like things that are real to you. And yeah. I, that always stuck me. I was like, wow, she's so right. And that's why Taylor's song, they're so good. Yeah, I um, understand. So then um, it just became increasingly more obvious to us that the L.A. music industry and our label just wasn't like just the right fit after five years of yeah. working and like not putting out albums. And just yeah, like, we just had so many like arguments with the people we were yeah, working Christina with. Yeah, was that, always like, arguing yeah. with random I say men. we, but it was Christina. Christina was and I, was going going I was like, toe yeah. Toe to toe. I was it was her up. incredible. And she, it was a force. Well, that was one yeah. thing that was a huge transformation was like, in the beginning, we were very like, kind of like, okay, yeah, whatever you guys want. And then we kind of realized like, wait a minute, we actually have a pretty strong vision for like our music and yeah the, that was the power of social media was that we had this very like personal connection with our fans we were talking to them we knew about their lives we got letters from them like yeah. all the time we had like thousands and thousands of letters messages like yeah. we met them at meet and greets at shows like we knew our fans personally and we knew what they wanted and we had these very strong um like we we wanted to do these certain songs with strong messages but and our label like I think they like appreciated that, but they did, but they didn't know what to do with it. It was, and it was very political too, because like putting out an album and everything is like very expensive. They did put a lot of money into like our Made in America music video and like other things, but I think it got to a point where they just didn't want to put the money in to like put out the album with us, yeah, and like take the risk. And so we kind of, and almost felt like we were kind of shelved at the end, like yeah. not really being supported, not really getting like opportunities. And just sort of like being sat on because they didn't really believe in us. Like yeah, they were like they're like this. I don't really know how this is gonna work. So like, why would you want to put a huge investment into something when you're like, yeah. I don't really know. Well, and there was this a big thing of like, oh, you can only release songs if this writer is on it. Yeah. yeah. You have to have it's, like a certain writer. Because it's yeah. all about the radio. Yeah. And, and so we, like, the yeah. radio yeah, is saying, so political. You gotta, get the, hit. gotta like, get the hit. You can't just have a good song and yeah, get it on the radio. It's like, they're not even going to listen to it unless like, oh, this writer's on it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. When they came back with our like sample track listing, I was like, honestly angry. I was shocked. Because I was like, <laughs> this is not the best of what we've written at all. It's just a bunch of the big name writers. But a lot of them, it's like, it doesn't even feel like they put that much into some of these songs yeah. like yeah. it was just like yeah this is a big writer but this song is not good people yeah. aren't gonna connect with this just because you're a good writer you've written good songs doesn't mean every song you write is great yes. yeah like, that, yeah <laughs> yeah and we were just felt after a while like we were literally being like creatively like just stifled. stifled well and, and like in this fight all yeah. the time like yeah and, and then we, yeah it was a lot of like promises that were made and not kept yeah and it's just it's very political there's so much that happens behind the scenes that you don't see from the outside in the music industry mm -hmm. that we learned all about the ins and outs of that in our like five years that we were in la and also one thing we talk about is like we started we we had this whole thing with touring which was very political where like i don't know if we can really say that but like do you remember what happened with touring why we didn't tour no I don't really know if we can really say that, but no, basically there was like, out there was two it. people in the music industry. One was on our team and one was with a certain agency. That's basically pretty vague, I would say. And they had this feud and the agency person oh, was like yeah. trying to like kind of punish our manager, manager in different ways. And like, it was just this whole thing. I literally yeah. don't. So that. they wouldn't book wouldn't, anything wouldn't allow us. us to tour. Just kept saying, I don't think they're ready. I think they need more time. And like years and years this went on. So we weren't oh allowed to gosh. tour. We weren't allowed to put out an album. I did not know that's why. Like I this. had no clue. I'm learning things today. And apparently. finally, when that person was not a part of us, like we weren't with that, our contract thing ran out with that agency. Yeah. Then we went on our first tour and we were like so excited. I think that tour was an awakening for us. Yeah, like it was. We went to um, Europe in 2015. I think yeah. it was the beginning of 2015. And we practiced for months and months and we would watch videos of like Ed Sheeran and like, I remember like Bruce Springsteen. Alanis like, Morissette. All, yeah. Like Shanae O'Connor, like all these different, like huge U2 prolific artists. And just like, what is it about their sets that are like so good? And we just wanted to like pour our hearts and souls yeah, we did. out on stage. And it was, it honestly like makes me emotional thinking about it because that was one of the most powerful experiences of my life 
not even as a performer, but just as a human just being. Just watching everyone's reaction to our songs they never yeah. heard before. Oh my gosh. And also like predominantly like English was not the first language we were in Europe. Yeah. And like they would cry with us. Yeah, that's we what would, I was like, going to say. Is, like, there was such an incredible like vibe. It was Yeah, wild. we did not expect that at all. Like we went to Europe and we're playing, we we played a bunch of songs that they didn't even know. It was like yeah, a, a lot of acoustic set. It was set. an acoustic set, songs they didn't know. And the fans were like bawling and we were crying on stage because we were feeling it too. It was was just this extremely powerful, like life-changing experience. And I remember us like sitting backstage in Portugal and at this little like cafe table. Yeah, after our first show. And we were like, whoa. Like that was so, I think that really made us realize like, we know that our songs are powerful. We know that our fans connect with these songs and we know that we want to tour. We want to perform. Like that was, I think that was a huge turning point for us yes. as a band. Mm-hmm. And that was 2015. And I think that I personally, I don't know how you guys see it maybe, but like, I feel like that tour was one of the things that gave us the confidence to be like, I don't think we should be with our label anymore. Well, and also the, uh, I don't think so. Really? I think what gave us the confidence was dad saying to Christina, you know, you guys don't need to be with the label. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, no, <laughs> he was definitely the instigator, but I know for me personally, it was years and years of being told by the label, like, oh, you have to do these other songs that you didn't even write or that you don't really connect with. And then I was like, but look at our fans literally connecting so deeply with the songs. Yeah. That yeah. I feel like it was more that that's what made us realize like, oh, we can actually write songs yes. that people like. It's like, yeah. and we should we listen to ourselves. We don't need this, like, we don't need these other writers. Well, to, and like, also by 2015 or whenever it was, the technology and the world had advanced a lot more to where it was a lot easier to put out your own stuff. Yeah. And like it there was way it easier to be so an indie artist. Gate kept if that yeah. is the correct Because like social media was actually like on and popping. Yeah. By and then. it was yeah. way easier to do your own thing. So then we decided to get out of our deal and we moved here to Nashville and we were Potentially at the beginning, thinking about getting into like the country industry or the music industry here. And then we were like, no, we wanted to we be met independent this, women. We met ah! with this record label and the guy literally oh, bullied, my gosh. bullied us. And Wait, I think, that was wild. Looking back, I'm like, I feel like that was like a tactic to like see if we were like, Some like pliable. if he could kind of like break us down and yep. control us. I agree. Like, yeah. From the start, just like cutting us down like oh, he told us we weren't talented enough to make it to be in the country world because he's like in the country world this is not pop like they have real talent like they work so hard blah 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 and I we're like shocked. what we are were you so saying? saying this was honestly such a creepy experience this man <laughs> flew us out to Nashville we were here for a week he, he is pretty like pop, like very high up in the country world and the for the most of the week he was like he's so nice us. he took oh, us to his yeah. family's house yeah. he took us to his daughter's youth group he's like i'm a christian man i'm a <gasps> man of the lord he's playing christian music I'm in the car so scared. like wow what a great guy and then it was like the second or third to last day of the trip he like has this play for all these nashville execs and then he's like you're not talented <gasps> and he Literally, like switches into this like, like really so mean scary. like i was like, like he, i think it was like he was trying to be like but you know, you're not good enough. But like, if you're with me, then like, maybe I, I can. Could I can tell you, you how to be but good he enough. Also, but you won't know yeah. unless I tell you. Yeah, it was not fun. But then after that, we were like, maybe that was just meant to be, though. That that was the person that we saw here. Because then we were like, we don't want to be in the music well, industry here at all. Yeah. Well, we because, didn't want to be with a label here. We we were like, maybe we should switch labels. And then we were like, maybe we should just not have a label. Because that yeah, really sucked. Because then we exactly. put out uh, Up at Night, which like. Yes, we did our first that album. That was like a. Finally. That was supposed to be kind of like country-ish crossover oh, kind I of loved album, it. which is like it's not that country, but no. like it. There are has some banjos. banjos in it. Yeah, it does, and like a lot banjos. of acoustic guitar. It was very much and like acoustic guitar pop with a country. And I element. will say, our fans were like borderline enraged at that point that we had not put out an album. Oh, they were so yeah. they were, and they, like we don't was, want another EP. We couldn't, like it was <laughs> sad because we couldn't like tell them what was going on behind the scenes with the label. Yeah, we're just like, coming soon. But we just kept putting out EPs because that was what we were, like, allowed to yeah, do. Yeah, and it wasn't, Ugh. yeah, it wasn't our fault. We weren't in control of the situation at all. And then we finally got, and they were like, finally! Yeah. Five years And then later. we just started like, putting sorry. out a bunch of albums after that and having fun doing things, like, oh, our yeah. way. When we moved to Nashville, it was like, a giant weight had lifted off of us. Like, we were in a new place. I think L.A., honestly, I don't think we realized, like, I know um, for me, I don't know how you guys feel, but I know when I went back for the first time, I was like, this is a dark 
place. Like mm. maybe just my experiences were kind of like clouding what, it too. You know what affected me. So being back there remind, reminded me of like I feel like we were in a pretty dark place when we lived there, and then we moved to Nashville, and I felt like a weight lifted off my shoulders. It was like we can actually like express ourselves create creatively. We can have creative control. Like it felt like we kind of came to life as artists when we moved to Nashville. Yeah, I feel and like it too. was more so like in LA. I feel like. Maybe not everyone, but I feel like for the most part, we were really, like, lonely. Yeah, Like, even we though it's like, yeah, we know, you had millions of friends, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I most of us did. I had a few. I had no <laughs> friends. And it was hard to find, like, Yeah, really like, a friends. lot of us didn't really have friends. We, we weren't the really, store. like, we didn't really, like, have a community. We weren't, like, connected. Like we didn't really fit in, like, too. No, we, we just kind of, all. like, ha- hung out with each other and, like, tried to make friends and, like, had some but like it just it wasn't that like rooted community and yeah. I feel like that was such a difference yeah being here is we actually all of us found like good close friends and like community a real community yeah and too like in one of the big differences is like in the LA music industry there's sort of this sometimes unspoken sometimes very blatant rule of like you put your career above everything. You, your career yeah. is your god, and everything else doesn't matter. Yeah, they had us like recording in the middle of the night. Oh, we were literally, we were literally and they we were, like, I was like, you're twelve, and, and we were they recording, had us, and like, like, recording like, until like past midnight. Or yeah. like, what are you doing? Like, do you not realize that these are children? Some of them are literally children and young teenagers. And also, like, but then when we came to Nashville, it felt like people were more. Music is important and you put a lot into it, but you also have your family. Yeah, you also have like your friends. Work life balance. It's a little bit more yeah, like I yeah. that. And it felt like it was more like community. It wasn't as like cutthroat. Yeah. It was more like it felt like people wanted to help you and it wasn't just like they were just being But also fake. we got to do things our way. And we got to like run our we got to step into like businesswoman mode. Yeah. And like do the things that we like wanted to do and like really learn how to like run things and like we grew into like this whole business that we didn't even have before we didn't even know was like kind of possible for us yeah Yeah, i'm gonna just cut us right now not you guys you don't cut cut us talking cut right cut. now because we need to get to the next thing and yeah, we was, talked a lot really more <laughs> than we were thinking we were going to talk so yeah. maybe we can just finish this in the next episode because yeah. we didn't really do we were like oh we're going to talk up to now we are now we're still in like 2016 we're still like six years right ago so, was, well, I mean it's been how many years since we started a long 2007? time 2007 so but there's just a lot to talk about. Years. That's a lot of history. So I think, yeah, let's do, a part, do a part two, two in the next episode of the past six okay. years. Yeah. And then let's um, move on to Sister Spotlight. All Woo! right. Every week we put the spotlight on one sister. And this week, <laughs> da, 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 it is Amy's current Yay! crisis. So um, this is my low that I didn't say from the last episode. I'm going to tell you the story of it. No. Um, so basically, <laughs> okay, so this starts the other night. Um, I was getting ready to go. I was in, I got into my car. I was going to my friend's birthday party. And I was like, you know, lately... I knew that, like, maybe one of my headlights was out, but I was, like, <laughs> late, like, it had happened to be before, like, my car had some weird issues before <laughs> where, like, something would go out and then would come back on. Mm-hmm. And I still could see things, okay, guys? I could. So, <laughs> I literally turn on my car, and then I go to check the front, because I'm, like, I just, I have a feeling that they're both out right now. And I'm just driving with zero headlights. And mm. I walk to the front of my car, and in disbelief, I see no headlight. Oh. No light. I was shocked when I, I was, because I've been driving around like this, guys, for probably a Wait, so do you have an automatic light, or do you have, like... No, no, no. It, I tried the lights. They always turn on automatically. It just, they were out. Oh, wow. And, like, I literally was shocked to my car. I started panicking, because I was like, how? How have I not? No one's told me this. And I was like, okay, I guess they're not turning back on randomly. So I was like, 
shocked and in disbelief. So then I'm driving down the street. There's this random man getting into the car, getting it out of his car. And I'm like, excuse me. Wait, can I ask you a really you weird question? You were driving question? and you saw a man. Yeah. And so you like stopped your yes. car in the middle of the I was road. like, oh my gosh. Do are both of my headlights out? Am I insane? <laughs> yes, but I didn't believe it. I needed to get confirmation. And this random man was like, yeah, they are. I was like, how bad is it to be driving with no headlights? Because like, A, I wanted to go to this party, but B, I was like, what's going <laughs> do on? Do not do He's that. He's like, you're going to probably get a ticket, which is probably like... I mean, I you still have those little lights going on, like the flood, like the little fog lights, or whatever. Okay, okay. So like so that's why I can see. Going. That's okay. why I didn't oh, quite yeah. realize it wasn't like pitch yeah. black. No, no, no. That's people why it's could confusing. see me. Yeah. So then I was like, uh, okay, I'm panicked. I can't drive 20 minutes knowingly without headlights, you know. So mm. then I call Alex. I was like, ring, ring, Alex. What do I do? And I start driving to the house. He's like, well, I'm busy watching a movie. And I was like, <laughs> I want to go to this party. But he was like, well, I'm busy. And then I was Good like, fine. Good for him, honestly. I mean, honestly. <laughs> I well, it's like, fine, I'll go to my parents. I was like, guess I had one extra headlight in my car already. Oh. And then, oh, interesting. I don't think I, have I don't like, have that. I drove to my parents' house, and as I started driving up the hill to their neighborhood, I started crying my eyes out. Of course. Out because I pictured my dad knowing I'd been driving around with no headlights. <laughs> and I was like, I will never. I was struck with the deepest shame I've ever well, felt. Well, our in my dad entire gave some very life. stern lectures about driving, driving safety. Driving specifically, yes. And I literally was like, oh my gosh, I'm the largest idiot to ever idiot in the entire world like i started panicking so deeply like i'm dead alex won't help me he's like why don't you go to the parents house and try to figure out yourself i was like ah, okay so then but i wasn't panicking until i drove into their neighborhood and i was like oh my gosh i'm so dumb and then i call nick i'm like ring ring um wait nick our brother little nick? nick yeah because oh. he's little nick he's 18 christina's husband's named nick so he's little nick and so I call little Nick and I'm like, Nick, what do I do? First of all, I start crying my eyes out. I'm like, Aww. Nick, can you help me? And he's like, what's going on? And I was like, well, my headlights are both out and I just want to go to a party. <laughs> and then he was like, okay, you're driving with no headlights? <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, but like I have one in, but I need another one and I don't know what to do. And he's like, okay, well. First of all, why are you driving with no headlights? I was like, I don't know. So then he was like, well, a call. Let's Google AutoZone. Maybe it's still open. And maybe we can get a light. And so then I was like, okay. So I started Googling. And I was like, okay, it's 8.15. And it closes at like 9. Okay. So if I go time. there right now, I'll be there in plenty, plenty of time. And I was like, okay, Nick. Because Nick, I think, was with his friends or something or... He was somewhere. So then I was like, okay, I'm going to go drive to get the light. And then I, I also called another brother. I called Michael. And I was like, Michael, what do I do? I have no headlights. He's like, you're going. I was like, I'm going to store right now. But like, how do I get them in? I don't know what to do. So he's like, well, maybe sometimes at this like store, they can like put them in for you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'll try that. First of all, this auto zone has the creepiest parking lot ever. Like, Ever Wait, to I think exist. I know the one you're talking about. It's it is creepy. So dark. There's full like hedges. Like oh, if I'm getting no, murdered, no, no. this is the place. Oh. And the employees are also kind of scary too. No offense, no hate. <laughs> and like, because men in general scare me. Okay, but then my brother's like, I was like, Michael, what if I get murdered? He's like. No one is going to murder you where they work. That's just dumb. And That's I was like, true. Are you sure? <laughs> and he was like, Fine. So then I go to the store. And I'm sitting there crying. I go into an auto zone, advanced auto, whatever, crying. And I'm like, I need headlights. Both my headlights are out. And <laughs> wait, you were crying to the yes. employee? Oh. Yes. Because I was like, well, how did they react? Of my life. And I just wanted to go to a party. Wait, how did they react when they saw you crying? Were they like, <laughs> you're just like, okay. So then I was like, please help. And then he's like, oh, these cars are like really hard to change the headlights on. You tear all this stuff, blah, blah. And I was like, I'm going to die. So he's like, I can't do it for you. And mm -hmm. I was like, Ah. so I was like whatever <laughs> and I was literally sitting in this parking lot and I was like I'm gonna die first of all I'm gonna get murdered second of all I have no headlights I don't know what to do he's like having trouble finding what headlights to get and I was so annoyed because I literally brought him the one that I had and I was just like oh my gosh clearly this is just not working out for me so then we settled the headlight dispute though he can't put them in whatever I take my stuff and I get out of there 
Because I was like, I can't be here. And then Nick's like, I just got home. So, like, I'll just put them in for you. And I was like, okay. Aww. So then I literally, he's like, are you sure you can drive with no head? I was like, yes, I have little floodlights. It's like a few streets. It's fine. So <laughs> I drive to his house and then I'm sitting there on their giant freezer in their garage, just panicking. He's like, stop. It's okay. You're not that dumb. Just relax. <laughs> I was like, okay. So then he was like, he figured out how to do it where he didn't have to take all the random stuff that you supposedly have to take out. And then he changed my headlights. Aww. And then I went to Good the job, party. Nick. Wow. We and love you went to the party after that? <laughs> yeah, it was only like nine when okay. I got my headlights fixed. But, uh, like, but like your you're emotional in such state. distress. No, I, yeah. that's the part that I went to and everyone was like, hey, Amy. And I was like, hey. And you're like, like, oh, I needed that. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I ended up saying until like one in the morning. I was like, woo. Wow. But it was a rough, rough time. It was a like one of the biggest crises I've had like lately because I don't really have as big crises anymore at all but that one was I was yeah. it was too far <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen I'm street legal again love it everything is okay everyone is safe and just guys if you think that your lights are a little like you know looking a little dull a little more dim than usual <laughs> check it out check it out check it out every once in a while you know but yeah, love to hear. That's really all I have to say. Okay, guys, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Cimarelli Podcast. Make sure to join our Patreon to see our full part two coming next week to our Patreon and half on our YouTube. Um, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. So, bye. Bye. You've been listening to the Cimarelli Podcast. Follow Cimarelli on Spotify and subscribe on YouTube. You can also find Cimarelli on Facebook and Instagram.